Hi, welcome to the Fit and Healthy Today show. And today our subject matter is going to be on substance abuse, drug and alcohol addiction, and how to uh, determine whether or not a person may have a propensity towards that, uh, and what to do to get off and stay off, either the drugs or the alcohol. This is kind of a complex subject, so I hope you'll kind of bear with me. I'm gonna take a step at a time as best we can to make it in layman's terms to get you information to make good decisions. The causes um, are varied, and, and this by no means is the all-encompassing uh, causes, uh, or the list that I'm gonna give you. Um, there does tend to be a genetic tendency towards addictions. They find that there's a four to five times increase in uh, addiction if the parents were either drug addicts or alcoholics. Um, with alcohol, there are particular genes that break down certain chemicals uh, that make a person more sensitive to alcohol or less sensitive to alcohol. Like for example, the Asian population as a general rule produces less of particular, t or has less of this type of gene that neutralizes the effects of alcohol. And so when they drink alcohol, they don't feel good, even a little bit. So the tendency then towards mm, wanting to drink a lot of alcohol is just not there. But we do find other segments of our population in which it's much greater. Men are four times more likely to be alcoholic than women, but when women are alcoholic, alcoholics, hmm, they have two to two and a half times uh, a greater chance of having long-term side effects, diseases, cancers, diabetes, all of that, than men do with it. So it's much more harmful for women in that regard. Um, second cause, uh, psychological problems or biochemical imbalances, uh, including depression, uh, stress, anxiety. Uh, people look to self-medicate and drugs and alcohol oftentimes to take them away from the realities of what oftentimes isn't the best. So I think oftentimes we see too that us as parents or grandparents, <clears throat> in the way our society is today with broken families and all the coping skills that are there to help people deal with the various stresses of life in the society nowadays just aren't there. The family unit has been broken up. So if you got a good family unit, keep it strong and supportive of, uh, of your kids if you want to reduce the chances of drug addiction and alcohol. Uh, environmental factors uh, such as oh, my best friend does it, and oh, I'm going to try this, and this is cool, and this is what everybody else is doing. That social pressure to use it and the availability of the drugs, particularly if you put yourself in that environment to make those or have those be available all nowadays, from what I hear from my older kids, they're available everywhere. Sad to say, but the truth. And alcohol, most of us have some form of alcohol at home, and kids can get it or have older friends buy it. So... Uh, the pressures of all of that. So once again, the family social network of discussing, talking about what alcohol do, does, you know, maybe if there's an alcoholic in the family, you know, let's see what happened here, or, or they see what happens to people when they're on drugs. You know, giving the kids the education and then the social um, support within the family unit is probably one of the best preventative ways you can deal with in preventing drug addiction and alcohol addiction. Nutritional deficiencies. There are truly uh, nutrients that um, people can lack that will make them crave alcohol and drugs more. Uh, so obviously if they have anxiety, they may be uh, GABA deficient, or if they have depression, they may be serotonin deficient. So once again, working or doing that self-medicating is what we're seeing. Uh, certain B vitamins can be lacking. Uh, particularly bees. Um, people will drink alcohol and obviously, you know, beer, it's got B vitamins. So certain nutritional deficiencies will make them want that. Um, if you have blood sugar imbalances or diabetes or particularly in brain metabolism of sugar, you want to drink or they will want to drink alcohol to give them an immediate relief of those blood sugar problems or it will make them crave it anymore, even more. Um, microbes, parasites, um, candida, all physiological things that can make somebody want alcohol more or drugs to combat how they're feeling and to make them feel better. And actually, literally, if someone has candida, initially when they take it, they'll get some relief in alcohol. 
But boy, it feeds the candida, they grow, and it just makes the problem worse and worse. So focusing genetic, physiological, environmental, nutritional, and uh, blood sugar imbalances or candidiasis uh, is also contributing. Those are the things that I found in all my research that were the most common causes. Now, there are tests that doctors can run to assess um, the possible reasons why a person might have substance abuse tendencies. Truly thinking, tests for my doctor for this? Yeah. Um, vitamin and mineral analysis, especially magnesium, B vitamins, and chromium. Blood work can be taken to determine those. Chromium helps stabilize blood sugars. We talked about the B vitamins and alcohol. Magnesium deficiencies uh, can make you crave certain types of drugs, just like alcohol, or just like when you crave a lot of uh, chocolate. Um, chocolate oftentimes has high magnesium levels. You'll want lots of chocolate. Uh, but once again, chocolate also increases endorphins in its own way. Coffee, caffeine, cigarettes, they all do certain biochemical or cause certain biochemical reactions in the brain that if it feels good, you're going to attempt to try and do it again. But some of the testings in vitamins and minerals, uh, or of vitamins and mineral, mineral content in the blood can be helpful in determining. Digestion function, particularly testing for microbes, parasites, uh, candida, and that's generally done in a stool analysis. Um, you give them the stool, they check it out. If you've got candida or parasites, parasites only about 50% accurate, but at least it gives us something to determine why this person may have extreme, extreme sugar cravings. And you may have an alcoholic that also eats a lot of candy because they're trying to feed the, feed the yeast. The yeast are telling them to feed them. And so that stool analysis, analysis can be very helpful. Um, food and environmental al um, allergies and sensitivities, you can determine that through blood, obviously for food. And then uh, you can do the, uh, the little pricks that they do sometimes as well. Believe it or not, those kind of sensitivities can make people crave drugs and alcohol, once again, for relief of the symptoms. Blood sugar balance, simple pull in the blood to find out uh, what somebody's blood sugar is running or the little finger prick. Um, we'll find out whether or not there's a potential for blood sugar problems and if there's a family history of blood sugar problems. Grandma, grandpa, aunts, brothers, sisters, mom, and dad could tell you that you may have a propensity towards having blood sugar problems, which would tend to increase the risk of someone wanting to have more alcohol. Amino acid balances. And when I came across this one, I'm trying to think, okay, amino acids are necessary for brain function, for all essential functions within the body. So if the diet stinks, which standard American diet seems to stink, then the amino acid uh, ratios and balances within the body are going to be off. And, and blood and urine can show, or blood and urine tests can show whether or not your amino acids are off balance and you need dietary changes. Oftentimes, just going through the diet with somebody, you can kind of determine whether or not they're getting the right amount of aminos. But certain people metabolize aminos better, worse, not so good. And so the analysis can be very helpful. Um, I'm going to switch cameras over here and we're going to go and we're going to take a look here at some of the diet and detoxification uh, and supplements that can be done to help people get off and stay off alcohol and drugs. Whenever you have anybody trying to come off of alcohol and drugs, everybody, they come into me and they say, he needs to detox, she needs to detox. And I'm thinking, yeah, but not yet. First of all, you have to get the person stable, okay? You start feeding them the good, well-rounded meals of natural foods, lots of uh, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans, nuts, seeds, lean proteins. You want an alkali-producing diet because when they're getting off the drugs and alcohol, they feel like crap, bottom line. And by giving them these good foods, you alkali the blood, and you can go online and punch an alkali diet on Google or Yahoo or whatever your search engine is that you use, and you can get lists of alkali-producing foods. The more you alkali the diet, the better they're going to feel as they're trying to get off the drugs and the, or the alcohol, or and. Um, glass of water every two hours. Now, that flushes the cells, flushes the body, cleans the body. In a way, that's a form of detox, and that is a very important part of detox. But before we start the detoxification process, that glass of water, purified, reverse osmosis water, not distilled. Okay, we've got to have trace minerals going in there, so a nice, clean, purified water. Um, avoid all caffeine and refined sugar 
which would only increase, and I found this in two different sources of research, only increases the desire for alcohol and drugs. Wow, that's pretty phenomenal when you think about it. So diet, it plays a pretty doggone important role for to keep people from becoming an alcohol and drug addicted or getting them or helping them stay off of it and recover, okay? Once they're stable, and obviously whenever anybody's coming off of alcohol or drugs, um, they need supervision by a medical health pr practitioner, whatever your choice is. Um, but you, I think it's really important to monitor them. Certain drugs have extreme withdrawal symptoms, and alcohol can have extreme, all, most drugs out there can have extreme. So having a, a physician handy in that regard, consulting with, is very, very important in this withdrawal um, process and the detoxification process. Once they're stable, looks like we've got two weeks, a month going on here. They've been eating balanced diet and food. They're getting more stable. They're starting to feel better, and they're not having the withdrawal symptoms. Then I think we can go ahead and look at detoxing. And we're talking about detox. Anybody can do these kinds of detoxes. But this, for some reason, and it, they, most of the literature that I came across, four to six months, four to six months, oh, that's a long time, um, to detox most of this out of the body until the body starts feeling actually really normal. And then we got to work on reversing whatever damage things do, and that just takes time. But once they're stable, you can do detoxes with fresh vegetable juices. Hopefully you got a juicer, otherwise it gets pricey going down to wherever to get the vegetable juices. And I'm not talking V8. Okay, I know I don't usually say brands, but in this particular case I will. That's primarily tomato juice. I'm talking about good, wholesome, enzyme-rich. I'm putting it through the machine and I'm drinking it within four to six, well, four to six hours because I want you got to have those enzymes. you got to have those enzymes. Uh, helps with repair, recovery, and detoxification. And we're talking carrots, beets, celery, lots of greens, those fresh, wholesome vegetables, okay? Uh, broths, herbal teas. Uh, then after about three to five days of this, this is what I'm coming across in most of the protocol that I see for detoxing after alcohol and drugs, then you start adding in brown rice, apples, things that are really easy on the digestion, a little bit of food at the, at the same time. Getting back to the real good, wholesome diet, keeping the blood sugar stable, keeping everything in balance. Um, there are whole body cleanse products available out there that you can buy that can help detox. So I think once you've done some of this um, vegetable juicing, getting the body more alkaline, there are cleanses that you can get that clean out the bowel, they help with liver, bile excretion, they help the kidneys work better. They've got some good antioxidants in there to help uh, get liver function a little bit, uh, well, a lot bit better because most of these drugs and alcohol cook the liver. Alcohol cooks the liver. Um, I'll have people come in, for example, that are doing hepatitis C natural treatments. I have a good customer of mine right now. He came in, uh, he, his viral count, down. Doctor was so happy, doing good. It was one third what it, what, it, what it was. And his girlfriend came in and it went down a little bit, but her alcohol consumption is greater than his. So alcohol, very, 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 very hard on the liver. So obviously if you're detoxing alcohol, you shouldn't be on it anyway. But um, a lot of people who come off of drugs though will try to look for something else and it's from one form of addiction to the next. And so well, you can't have the drugs, well, we'll do the alcohol. So one form of addiction to the next. So, and that's not what you're after here. The, you're after having a good, healthy life and recovering to where you're within that normal range, again, without the drugs. Remember that kind of general rule about uh, when a person's an addict. To stabilize the blood sugars, to clean out the bowel. You can't clean things unless you got scrubbing fibers, bottom line. Kind of like the old bathtub commercial, you got to have those scrubbing fibers. And that fiber goes in, cleans out the bowel, removes the toxins that your body's doing from all this other detoxification. Okay? Supplement wise, oh boy, the list is long and lengthy. And so if you need a copy of this, you can stop by uh, any of the vitamin and herb stores and you can get a copy of this list um, in. Uh, Orcutt, Buellton, Lompoc, Grover Beach, and Napomo. We have copies of it which can help you. Um, 
a good multiple vitamin, high in B vitamins. B vitamins, remember we talked about how nutri certain nutritional deficiencies can make you crave more alcohol and drugs? Well, let's get a good multi with extra B vitamins, okay? So you're not craving that. Bs also help you physiologically deal with stress. So, oh boy, here you go. You wanna deal with stress? Get your Bs up, good multi to match. Milk thistle, there is medical journal research left and right about milk thistle extract, also known as silymarin. And I'm talking about the good sources, not something you buy down at your supermarket, okay? We're talking good health food store brands that we can guarantee the actual what's content is in there in that 80% silymarin. So, and most of the research I ran across was between 250 and 300 milligrams of silymarin three times a day. Supports liver detox. And when I say liver detox, I'm talking about liver enzymes, AST, ALTs, the list goes on. Helps the liver repair itself. Vitamin C, vitamin C helps the body uh, convert hmm, what's called glutathione into N-acetylcysteine. They work kind of hand in hand together, which helps the liver detox. So vitamin C, minimum of 2,000 milligrams twice a day. You can go higher, whatever your bowel, um, bowel will allow. Sometimes if you go too high on vitamin C, um, it will cause loose bowels, and that's kind of how you know you're doing a little bit too much. Chromium for blood sugar uh, cravings, uh, and actually helps with dieting in that regard as well, too. L-glutamine on an empty stomach. Well, tons of research for recovery from alcoholism on this because it helps with sugar cravings. And bottom line, when people go off alcohol, they want another sugar, and it's going to be their candy, it's going to be whatever else, but they want sugar. The L-glutamine helps that it improves the mood, energy, and sugar cravings. Uh, most of the research was 500 milligrams uh, or two grams on an empty stomach, okay? dl phenanolene Ha! Huh, I had a lot of people that would be on pain medications, they were on it from an injury and they stay on it, they can't get off of it. dl phenanolene in conjunction with their physicians, will work with to get them off of those medications. Um, the dl phenanolene raises endorphin levels, which are natural painkillers, and they can help get off those type of painkiller medications. Super green foods, once again we talked about alkaline the blood, we're going to alkaline the blood in order to detox and have energy and feel better. These super green foods also on a cellular level go in and then like the scrubbing bubbles they kind of clean out everything actually on a cellular level as well. Calcium, magnesium relaxes muscles and nervous system. When you're detoxing, sometimes you'll see this, the shaking and all that's associated. It can help relax the muscles and help a little bit with sleep. Uh, in conjunction with, uh, hopefully I wrote, yeah, valerian, hops, passion, flower combinations can help with sleep. I didn't write it on here, but <clears throat> oftentimes alcoholics and people who've been heavy drug users um, don't produce adequate amounts of melatonin. So that's something else that can be uh, tried in lower dosages, uh, sublingual under the tongue, it melts and it can help sleep, especially if there's a lot of uh, stress associated with sleep. We, we have three or four doctors here in Lompoc that, that send their patients in to go get melatonin to help them sleep. And oftentimes when you're going through physiological stress, you just don't, your body just says, well, we don't need to produce melatonin because we're in a fight or flight mode. So. Um, niacin, medical journal studies on this one, I kind of thought niacin helped substantially stop drug and alcohol cravings. And I know we recommend it or we see it a lot having to do with, uh, with cholesterol and that type of thing. But obviously, and in this case, the flesh-free niacin is what they did most of the studies on, um, helped re substantial reduction in cravings for those particular items. Inocetylcysteine, one of the strongest antioxidants known to man for the liver. Vitamin B1, and this was very well researched as well, 100 milligrams once or twice a day. What we found was it considerably helped the brain, especially with memory, cognitive impairment, visual changes, and visual changes in alcoholics uh, happen a lot. B1, for some reason, helped with that in the brain, with the recovery in that regard. So I think I'd add that into my regimen of my multivitamin with high Bs in addition. Um, kudzu, <laughs> we should slip this into all our children whenever they want to go drink and we, or we know that they're going to go out. Kudzu is an herb that causes nausea when alcohol is consumed. Let's see how many parents are going to go out and buy that one. I'm looking at the crew and <laughs> it's like, 
Um, yeah, it's an herb that you can get in any good health food store, but it can literally make you not want to have it. Kind of like there's meds out there that make you want to not smoke. This is a natural, no side effect herb, herbal that can be utilized to help just ugh, taste bad. Probiotics and enzymes improve digestion. When you're under physiological stress, you don't digest your food very well. Bottom line. We're going to get the omegas to help stabilize blood sugars as best we can. Uh, those essential fatty acids also help reduce inflammation in the liver, kidneys, and elsewhere in the body. And then there are other alternatives I wrote down here, homeopathics, Bach flower essence remedies, um, and there's particular aromatherapy, which is oils. I mean, literally, juniper breaks up uh, hmm, poisons, that should say, instead of poisons, and speeds, up, speeds them up the exit from the body, and that's just taking juniper oil and putting a little bit, uh, a couple of drops mixed with the lotion or in a bathtub. Uh, chamomile, lavender can be natural antidepressants you can add to a bathtub or in some lotion to help soothe and calm, rubbing in some lotion on the bottom of the feet. A lot of people do that with their babies to calm and help them sleep. Anyway, I hope this helps. This is just a, a thumbnail about what's out there, so research it further. Next, um, since this took so much time, we're going to be moving on to the research portion of our show. Thank you. the research portion of our show and with us today is Ralph Turciano. Ralph? Well, thank you very much for the intro. Well, first article, Viagra. Not just Viagra, Veggie Viagra. Well, it turns out German researchers out of Berlin Schuret Hospital during the clinical trials discovered a combination of commonly found herbs that actually outperformed Viagra. Now what I want to do is I want to sanitize this just a little bit just so you get an idea. They felt better after you know what, had more fun, you know where, and generally felt much better about themselves. Now, the German research discovered a couple of ingredients did the job far superior to the pharmaceutical. One was tribulus teratus, also known as puncture vine. The second was generally maca, which you find very commonly in a lot of stores too, and heard about for quite some time, and grape juice extract. Most likely, if I had to guess, I think it would have been the skin. But however, the combination from Germany is not going to be out to 2010. And again, always consult with the medical professionals. But this is something you can put together now yourself. Now. All right. After that, also, a diet rich in calcium helps with weight loss. Now, at the British Journal of Nutrition, what they did is they took about I'd say close to four to 500 women over 15 weeks that were deficient in calcium, meaning they were getting less than 600 milligrams per day. They did something just as simple as add calcium to their diet. Well, the women that were getting 1,200 milligrams of calcium per day for 15 weeks, remember, no change in diet as far as that, no change in exercise, and they were already deficient in calcium, keep in mind. In 15 weeks, those women lost an average of 12, sorry, 24 and a half pounds. Pretty amazing just for basically adding calcium to their diet. After that, sodium. Sodium may have a natural antidepressant effect. Now most of the world gets usually about an average of 10 grams of salt per day. And usually the rest of the, uh, the United States likes to keep the recommendations down to only about four grams per day. But discovered one thing interesting when experimenting with animals, and this is out of the University of Iowa, by the way. What they discovered was this. When the salt was low in the diet of animals, that they tend to try to gravitate to things which normally used to give them enjoyment, not do it as much. Somehow indicating that they had, were not taking any pleasure in the things that used to give them pleasure. Very interesting what they're looking at. So they know now that salt has something to do with basically elevating people's moods. They just don't know exactly what. It's going to be interesting to see as time goes out, but low sodium diets may ironically, one way or the other, end up with a less pleasurable life. Something to look at. Vitamin C in gout. Now this is pretty amazing. Now chances are they use the buffered vitamin C. I'm not certain. 
So be cautious when you do this. What they discovered was this. They looked at men that were getting a little over 250 milligrams of vitamin C per day. When they did that, the incidence of gout went down by 17%. How long, you may you ask? Well, this study was done on 47,000 men between the years of 1986 and 2006. Also, just put in the archives of internal medicine. When they added 500 to 99 milligrams a day, they went down 34% their chance of gout. When they did over close to 1,500 milligrams a day, their gout incidence went down by 45%. What the researchers said, for every 500 milligram increase in vitamin C, their chance of gout went down 17%. Simple, cheap, incredible. How they say? Vitamin C may affect the reabsorption of uric acid by the kidneys and increase the speed at which the kidneys work to prevent inflammation. Pretty darn cool. Another thing, DHA, out of the World Journal of Gastroenterology. DHA is essential fatty acids that you require for mental acuity. Well, for those that are taking it for that, guess what? You get an extra benefit. It also keeps check inflammation in the gut from one thing known as AA, otherwise known as arachidonic acid, or prostaglandin 2. So people with those concerns, a little bit of DHA, not DHEA, but DHA will go a very long way. Well, out of India, and actually I should say out of the University of Michigan, they discovered how turmeric curcurum works, otherwise known as the holy powder. But they have discovered that curcurum works as a disciplinarian. What they found out, it regulates the actions of membrane proteins, but basically makes certain that the cells act orderly and improve cell resistance to infection and malignancy. Very cool, very interesting for a simple cooking spice, pretty darn neat. Maybe our ancestors are on something for quite some time. Sugar. Do you think just the consumption of sugar may lead to aging faster, wrinkles and things like that? Well, you may think so, but ironically, wrong. It is the cells sensing the presence of sugar that somehow accelerates the aging process, meaning just the taste of something sweet that seems to have that impact. So that brings a big uh, interesting question when it comes to artificial sweeteners and things that want to give you a presence of sweet. Something occurs in the cells when they sense glucose that causes them to go insane. What it is, we don't know, but quite interesting. Well, we'll wrap it up right there for now. And thank you very much for the time. And back to you. Yep, thank you very much, Ralph. Once again, whether it's substance abuse, research on the latest, greatest, Viagra, whatever it is, research more for yourself. We hope the show gets you interested in doing that. Thank you very much.